Welcome to Mount Bunanyong and the men's elite. Actually, no. We're still in Sydney. Which gives me a chance to answer the one question I didn't answer last year. We'll wait for the train, huh? Okay, guys. I wasn't going to do a vlog before going down to Nationals and then about half a dozen of you asked me are you riding the XR4 or the Specialisma? At which point I realised that well I introduced you to the XR4 but then I never really explained why I'm still riding the XR4 and specifically why I'm riding it at basically a hill climb which is the Men's Elite National Road Race. What is on this bike, my own selections and personal thoughts. All right, let's do this. Okay, before I get started guys, if you do like this kind of stuff, talking about bikes, reviewing stuff, then we've got the team stuff, the tactic stuff, subscribe to the channel, like the video, we've got heaps coming up. Now, let me set the scene. A um, couple of months ago, I did the first ride review on this bike. It'll be here or there or one of them, a link below or something like that. Now, in that video, I cover all the specs, the sizes, the cassette rate, all that stuff that's on this bike. So I'm not gonna go into that now. What I wanna do right now is just a couple of little personal additions, some things that I've changed along the way from personal preference, and I reckon you guys will be interested in that. And then we'll, well, then we'll get onto the question. Well, why am I gonna ride an aero bike in a climbing bikes race? Now in that first ride video, I was going on about how good the direct mount brakes were. Bike industry, you've just stitched yourself up. These are amazing. It came with a bit of a caveat because with the small frame size, right, I was having a lot of difficulty, especially up this end with the bends, with these integrated bars and the small nature of the head tube on this bike. To the extent that I actually snapped two brake cables um, just with the, the bends in them. Q uh, Felicia at Cycling Projects, as many of you know, he's a bit of an artisan in these things. He took one look at it and said, heat wrap, so, or shrink wrap, whatever it is. So it's that Jaguar uh, wrapping. The braking now is absolutely superb and it, it has longevity to it. The other thing is that this, for me now swapping between the training wheels and the race wheels, it's made a huge difference with that. It's now just a barrel adjustment thing, whereas I couldn't do that previously on the standard brake cable or brake housing. Obviously the other one, right, is the, the ceramic speed stuff. Wait, okay. Again, links below video, we've done that, we've covered that, um, and we'll go into the performance of that as it sort of goes along. But that is obviously another thing that's, that's changed on this bike. The power meter. Can you see the power meter? You're saying, but that's the power meter that was in the review that you did first off. Yes, it was, but as pretty much everyone commented, uh, when I was down at Tour of Tasmania, I was running an SRM Origin. Uh, I had some trouble with this particular power meter uh, to the extent that I can't get away with anything with you guys. So did a really good ride at King Valley. Uh, climbed with the best 20 riders in the NRS up that sort of 10 minute climb on the gravel. Doing 297 watts. I'm light, but I'm not that light. I will say this, since putting this power meter back on, it's been completely flawless. I've said this in the past with a lot of these electrical componentry type devices, shit happens. Stuff just sometimes doesn't work and it really is that after sales stuff to me that dictates whether the product is even good or not. Is that good English? I don't think it is. In this per particular case, I had a really good experience with, with actually, so that is the same power meter, but it's just been recalibrated and it's working fine. I'll throw this into the mix as well. Believe it or not, this power meter lowers the, the full build weight of the bike by about 113 grams over a carbon SRM origin power meter. Interesting. Uh, other little upgrades that I've snuck on here are a carbon railed stealth saddle. Oh, they don't have decals on this side. That's weird, they don't have decals on this side. I am running Michelin, Michelin Pro 
for Tubular. Now, uh, they're courtesy of Zach at Bike. Oh, I actually should say this. I've paid for everything on this bike. So I can kind of say what I want. Except the bar tape. I didn't pay for the bar tape. So there's a plug. I'll get to that. Michelin tires. So we're gonna try those out. Did get a discount on them, uh, but glued them up myself and going to run those at Nationals. I like the way they seem to, to bed on the tire so far. It was a pretty easy process. So stay tuned for that one. Really, really like that. Two more things, but it's at this end. So, the Celeste Bar Tape. Uh, yeah, so it's it's a week in, it's something I'm really keen on, but it's actually, it's a new company, it's an Australian company. I'll pop the links below again as to who this is, um, but really, really exciting little company that are churning out some custom bar tape. I'm hoping to actually do some mirror custom bar tape in the future. And finally, guys, I get to be brutally honest with you again. Uh, a few guys who follow me on Instagram um, noticed that, I think it was during one of the West Head races, that my DI2 went flat. What was funny about this was that I'd actually charged the bike two weeks prior to it. So clearly there was something was going wrong in the system. What we ended up concluding was that I'd actually run the battery dead about two months prior to that. And sometimes, sometimes if you run it completely to, to zero, you can cause a bit of a conflict somewhere in the system, which is kind of what happened with my. The crux of this issue really was and I touched on this in the very beginning with these bars, was that charging process and the access to the junction box. It was honestly a 20 minute process, minimum. You guys were amazing with some of your feedback on and giving me some ideas about it. And Jason really came up with probably the most, well, the simplest, which is uh, some 3M tape. I can quite happily just pop it off with the, with the Velcro, charge it up or do any kind of troubleshooting or just the usual junction box stuff is there and it's accessible. I'll be honest, that is probably one of the greatest stress reliefs on this bike that I've had so far. And, and for me, takes away probably the greatest issue that I was having with, with the integrated aero bike. Okay, if you are still watching, this is the real reason I'm riding this bike at Nationals and it's the fit, guys. Let me explain. So, the geometry on this bike is theoretically exactly the same as the Specialisma, the road bike. Now, slightly taller head tube, slightly taller head tube, uh, which is mostly just due to this little bubble. That's all good and well on a geometry chart, but like I said in that first ride video, guys, like, chalk and cheese, you could not have told me that this geometry was necessarily that similar. And this is where I'll let you in a little secret. I was pretty close to giving this back. I was doing some riding down in Barrel with, with Toby and Cam Grant. I just couldn't get comfortable on climb. I, no, comfortable is not the right word. I just couldn't find that I could get power out on climbs on this bike. What I've ended up doing is I'm actually almost a full centimetre off what I was on the Specialisma. Now, that's pretty dramatic for someone who's pretty well used to their saddle position and have been for a long, long time. It wasn't a magic button, but I'll tell you what, I went out two or three days later, did a Berry Mountain hit, did a PR up it, but did the kind of power that I wanted to be back doing. And ever since then, it's just felt stronger and stronger and stronger. But guys, this is where I think the aero bike thing has it for me. So, okay, geometry is the same, but you look at this bike, the tubing's totally different, isn't it? Like, you know, they're rounder, they're thicker tubes. It's just the nature of these type of bikes. And I get the feeling that the compliance that that then for affords you, especially for someone who races a bike, there's an advantage to it. Now, the way that plays out in the road for me, perfect example, okay? Perfect example, waterfall. So I did the waterfall climb the other day off the back of doing some Stanwall stuff. And it's a climb where it's, it's a kind of draggy, gradual climb with a little pinch that then flattens and then right at the top, quite steep, quite steep. So I approached that climb in three different ways on this bike and in all three ways, it reacted the way I wanted it to do it. So I did some sort of strength stuff at the bottom, big ring in the saddle, kind of ground it out. The bike reacted. It got speed up, held it, 
and it's helped me solid in that position. Then over the top of that onto the flat section, down into the drops, aero position, driving like you would in a TT or at a crit. And then the last two minutes, you're ultraviolet, you're out of the saddle, you're in the 39.25 giving it socks. Man, bang, it's just reacting. So under every circumstances, Every, every circumstance, it did what I wanted it to do. And that, well, that's why I'm gonna ride this bike at Nationals. Like I said in the other vlog, one step at a time. Not everything's in place just yet. So it just doesn't flick a switch. Because that's my last ride here in Sydney. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'll let you in on a little secret. So I am jumping on a train Saturday night, an overnight XBT sleeper cabin down to Melbourne, arriving Sunday morning, doing the Men's Elite National Road Race on Sunday, turning around, getting the sleeper train home. I have to be home. That's just the way it's gonna play out. Uh, guys, so I will daily vlog this event. I don't know how exactly this is gonna play out, uh, when it will be done or anything like that, but that's the idea, is a one camera show and just a totally different look at what Nationals is. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, hopefully I can get this up before our race um, intermittently, guys, like the 23s we're racing, Angus, Sammy, like, pay attention. I don't know when this is gonna be up, so this might all be sort of useful information, but um, yeah. All right, see you on the train. Okay, this is, this is the new end screen, because I haven't figured one out yet. Guys, subscribe to the channel. Like this video, there's lots of this stuff coming up. We've got some pretty cool away days happening. Fire a comment below with the type of thing you would like to see and whether you think this camera is any good because this is a different one again.